Happy New Year, Tanglers! For me, a new year brings new beginnings, new challenges, opportunities, and invigoration. My New Year's resolution is to embrace the art of living to its fullest. And if you don't fast forward over the video clips of my life in Austria, you know that we live in a small farmhouse built 164 years ago on a mountainside above a little village. We made our international move from Colorado for various reasons, but we're very happy that we landed here. We gave up a lot, but have gained as much or more. This move has made me realize how important it is to live mindfully, to cherish the mundane, and to be grateful for the moment. Sound familiar? Yes, this is all falls into step with Zentangle, which will accompany me along every life venture. One of those ventures was establishing a YouTube channel and sharing my tangling with you. It's been a great experience as so many of you have expressed your appreciation in the kindest of ways, and I'm so grateful for all of you. But I have decided to retire from YouTube to concentrate on that art of living I mentioned. I have a Zentangle art inspired retreat coming up in June, 2024, and I'm putting a lot of my energy into it so it will be just perfect. I don't have the hours in the day to continue with the YouTube tutorials that are in themselves nearly a full-time job. Additionally, our lifestyle here is quite laborious. We heat our house entirely with wood, we have no dishwasher or clothes dryer, and I plan on growing a vegetable garden this spring. You gardeners know how much time goes into that. I've also embraced my natural surroundings and I'm teaching myself as much as I can about the herbs, fruits, and flowers that grow here so I can prepare medicinal salves and tinctures and food from foraging them. Those things alone consume so much time, but please know that I'm not complaining. That's what I want. Again, it's just that there are only so many hours in the day. Artistically, I'm expanding my focus. Maybe I'll be doing more botanical illustration, more nature journaling, calligraphy, or maybe I'll finally paint clouds in large format as I've wanted to do for years. There's just so much to explore and I don't want to limit myself just to its entangle. I will keep the YouTube channel up so those of you who'd like to can revisit my previous tutorials. I always try to give you many ideas for using each of the focus tangles, so if you re revisit some of those, you can try new ways of creating with them. I will work towards posting new video classes too, so if you subscribe to bowtangle.net, as many of you already have, that's my website, you will get announcements when I do offer new video classes. I still can't offer online classes due to our remote location and the bad internet connection. It's with a bit of a heavy heart that I leave you with this last tutorial on my all-time favorite Tangle Mooka by Zen Tangle. Be well, my friends. Continue to find the joy and benefit of our shared art form and Tangle On. So here's my Moving On with Mooka little project that I made several samples of and some are finished and some are not but we're going to go for this here and I am using a 3z tile from Zentangle you can also as I did here in my sketchbook just trace a 3z tile if you don't have a lot of them I don't have many left so that's why I did that but I did find one after all and we're going to be working on that along with 01 micron pen. I've got a PN micron pen in black also available in case I want to um, work on the border uh, faster. And then this is a, Z, a 3B graphite pencil and I have my little plastic eraser, my kneaded eraser, and a tortillon. So that's all you'll need. You can also obviously just make a triangle on a piece of paper that you have and tangle along. So what I'm going to do is start with a border, which I'm going to do the traditional Zentangle way in which we just put dots in the corner. And for this I am going to use my PN. So the next step I'm going to do a string. Since this is a Zentangle inspired art project and Mooka can be challenging and to put it in the particular spaces that we want to put them in, I, I would say go ahead and just use a pencil uh, to get, get it right before you ink it out. So I'm going to 
find the approximate center and put a dot there. And then I'm going to divide the tile in half. And in half again this way. So we've got this nice set of crosshairs. we're going to make a diamond with. And actually I'm going to go ahead and put an aura line out here and we're going to put another one on the inside uh, for our gem. You'll see. Now it's time to start our mooka. So let me just do a demonstration of mooka quickly for you so you can get the concept. Uh, this is the mooka that Maria from Zentangle Headquarters, Maria Thomas, taught me. I learned from her on, I believe, one of her videos. Um, this is a nesting mooka and it's got the big frond heads. There's a couple different types of mookas, but I'm going to do a nesting one and that goes like this. I always start at the bottom of my mooka and I go up make my mooka frond, come back down with an aura line. Notice I keep my pen on the paper. It's one continuous line. Go back up, touch that mooka frond head, come back around and do the same thing until you can't do any more. So as you can see, the line starts here and it, this is actually considered a Mobius strip, a one continuous line, which causes a bit of a challenge for shading. But I, our, our project today shades in a particular way that is super simple. So that you can do the other mooka is the same way, same, same stroke, but instead of making that big fat frond, you're just going to make this thin and you just keep on nesting that like that. So let me just show you. I have a couple different projects here. I think I've shown these before. Here's one with the big fat mooka and here's some of the thinner frond mukas. So that's an example. And then in 2013, I did this. It's very old but I just started making these little nests and I didn't even plan this. But when I, when I pulled back and looked at it, I was like, oh, this looks kind of like a blossom of some type. So then I added these up here in a whimsical way. And as you can see, you can vary your um, mukas, even the thin ones by just adding one thick muka head uh, instead of all of them being that way. So that's, that's an idea for you. But this is truly Zentangle because I just started and I just played and played and played. And, you know, you can see that I wasn't super successful with some of my mukas. But honestly, if you followed my channel, you know, muka is my favorite tangle. And there are too many variations for you not to learn muka. And I've taught many, many years and many of my students are very afraid of muka. They just think it's too hard for whatever reason. And all I can say is practice. Practice makes perfect. So here's a, another idea of mooka with some um, flux leaves. And this is a design I can't take credit for. I think I saw something very similar online somewhere and just copied it. So um, yeah, let's go on to our project that is my design. And I do want my retreat people to take close attention and practice this before you come in June because this is going to be a small small part of one of our projects. Okay so starting oh I, I am going to do this in pencil just because we want to get it right and I want to encourage you just get it how you want it to be. So we're going to start here on this side and we're going to go towards the diamond. See, I'm already 
you want to touch the diamond side and you want to touch this side so that's why it's good to have pencil so that you can correct and make your first frond come back down this is what Maria calls an infurling I'm going to stop there I just like three for this particular project she calls these infurling mukas there's out furling ones as well I'm going to fill up this space here by jumping off the back of this mooka with another one and there we have our first set I'm going to do the same thing here but we're going to do a mirror opposite so we want we want our arcs to kind of kiss so I'm going to come in Generally, when I do these nesting mukas, I get progressively smaller as I go down. And then we're going to do that. And mooka is one of those tangles where you have to keep your eye focused on the point at which you are driving towards with your pencil. So that's a big tip. So now we're going to turn it around and do this space here. And we're going to do the same thing in terms of the exact same stroke. But this time I want to meet, I want this to be kissing. So I'm going to draw from here and I'm going to jump off, go up there. So that should have been kissing. We'll just correct that and then we can erase and then come back down here kiss and kiss and stop and then we're going to do the mirror opposite over here I'm going to drive up this line and jump off A little bit big so we can <clears throat> correct that isn't that pretty looks like a typical baroque scroll work so now I'm gonna erase the lines that don't belong there anymore and then I'm gonna lift the whole uh, graphite before I ink and while we're inking we can continue to correct further take your kneaded eraser and just lift that line this is what we do in botanical illustration too with our contour drawings we get our drawing all finished and then we lift before we start in with our colored pencil or whatever medium we're using Okay, I'm going to take my 01 and I am going to start as we did with the line here. And this time I'm just going to make that diamond. Do the aura. <clears throat> And I'm going to do one more aura line. So this really looks like a gem facet by joining the auras like this. And the gem itself, I'm going to divide this into two triangles, make a dot in the center, and drive to the edge. Of each of those triangular shapes 
and that all gets a little bit nicer and clearer when you erase. Okay, now we're going to go for the mukas, starting down here. Take your time. There we have all of our mukas drawn. Now I'm going to take my eraser and erase any of that graphite that was still left as guide. And then we're going to liven this up with lively line. I mean, you know what that means if you've been following me. We want to do some thick and thin line. Look at the difference between this and this. And how you do that is take your pen and just uh, I like, first of all, making, for this project, I'm going to make a little fescue in here. Kind of a teardrop shape. You can just do a, a dot if that's easier for you. That'll give you an, another uh, three-dimensional look when we go to shade. So let's do that on all of them first. Okay, I think that's all of them. And then I like to accentuate one, this underside of the frond with a little bit of weighting here in the corner and extra ink here, as well as the underside here, all the way down. And these are just suggestions. You can do whatever think you think looks good. Notice I'm only doing it on one side. I'm not doing it on all sides because you need to save some things that are lighter or else it's too homogenous. I like to view this as being almost like a metal or scroll work and or even paper cut out and if you had something like that you would be joining it here with like welding it together right so I'm I'm adding these little kind of joins these little weld weld joins right where the, the fronds are touching. Just that little triangular area in there. So it looks like they're really um, kind of worked as a metalsmith would do this. I'm just adding this. Lead your eye down into the corner. Same with this one. Just 
Just imagine those being stabilizing points for your mukha. And then one in here. All right, so there we have our finished ink work. And now we're gonna go and shade. Actually, one more thing I'd like to do, and you might not wanna do this, but I think these are really fun. I put these little, I call them little quail feathers on my mucha fronds often. Uh, this is something that you see a lot done in calligraphy when you see scroll work. And I, I, I think it makes it have this kind of old world feeling. For example, on this one, you drive on the top of its little head and then jump off and flip it up like a little, little curl. And sometimes you don't have room, so you wouldn't do it there, but you don't have to do it on every one. I just think it makes it kind of more interesting. One more thick and thin texture, right? So that is like a mini fescue. You could even do more fescues in here, but I'm gonna leave it as is. I kind of like that negative space being plain. And now we're gonna shade. So with your graphite pencil, we're gonna treat this as if it were kind of a wood cut, or that if this were metal, you would be seeing somewhat of a drop shadow under all of the scroll work on the inside. Nope, I could have. I forgot this one. I'm trying to stick to the inside. Do you see how this is the inside of the frond? Here, here, here. And then you will blend that out. Keeping it really dark near the line work. This one would get some too. You could do a little bit here, maybe less, less dark. And then do that for each of your sections. Here's another one where I've already laid down the graphite. Definitely would put some here and in the corners. So this is really pretty dramatic shading and if you like it, keep it. If you wanna lighten it up, <clears throat> just take your kneaded eraser. This side is a little bit dark for me, so I'm just gonna lift and blend back a little bit. And then here, I would treat this as the outside and this is the gem. So this would be the frame and I'll leave that and then I'm gonna shade in here a little. These are really fun if you do these on like a pastel colored paper or the Renaissance and then you can add white chalk. I think I was a little more successful with this one or this one, you can see it a little bit better. You could also do a pearl in there if you'd rather. Now, we're not quite done shading. Here's another alternative shading where you just, instead of the inside, you would shade the actual fronds themselves. But I really like this look. Uh, it's very much like when I make my cookies and do the icing with the white. The uh, other thing you can do, whoops, as you can see here, I went around the circle <clears throat> with a little bit of graphite. So this is the one we just did. 
here's the circle. Just put a little bit of graphite around those inner frond circles or fescues and then blend that out a little bit and it makes this look more three-dimensional. Right? See how much more three-dimensional that looks almost like a wood carving. Oh, we already have that graphite. Always keeping this big top in light. And I would say that's finished. I'm going to go ahead and put my chop on, sign and date it. And I hope you enjoy this last chance to tangle with me on my, on my tutorials for now. Maybe I'll come back to it, but I, I just really need to move on to other things for myself in terms of my creative outlets. And I've really enjoyed all these uh, months years actually tangling with you. Thank you for all of your supportive comments and your um, appreciation that made it all worthwhile for me. And I do invite you to keep uh, checking my website and signing up there as a subscriber. Then when I do new video classes, you can uh, get those announcements. And also I am going to keep my, my channel up obviously because uh, you know, you can still go back and look at things. You can review each of the tutorials that I've already done. And I, I, I try to give you several options for inspiration. So, you know, even if you've done one, you might want to go back and listen to those other suggestions and, and try those out. And do please continue to share your results uh, with me on my Annie's Botangle Alumni Student Facebook page. I'm continuing that on because you guys have built an amazing community, supportive of each other, knowing each other's styles, and I just, I love going there. It's, it's a, a time of um, healing and happiness for me uh, if I'm having a bad day, for example. So do please continue to post on Annie's Botangla Alumni Student Facebook page, and um, I'll see you there. I'll be sharing with you what I'm up to. Thanks again for all of your time and tangling and be healthy, be happy, enjoy your new year's resolutions. And I, I hope you attain all of your goals that you set for yourself. Bye-bye for now.